For us, there are three ways to approach a renovation. First, there's the approach of gutting out the existing house and reimagine the interior. Second, we draw a line. There's the old and there's the new, and sometimes they can be quite different. Third approach is where it requires we recognize and we acknowledge the history of the house, the existing condition, and we work with it and we just add small chapters to it. In Gawa House is a chapter we added to this 100-year-old cottage. The house is in Ivanhoe, a leafy suburb in eastern Melbourne. It was one of the very original cottage on the street. So the brief for this home never actually called for any extra space. It was more about rearranging the space. One of the awkward things about the space when we found it was the toilet was under the stairs and accessed directly opposite the front door and the bathroom and laundry. You had to do a dog leg under the stairs to get to them or go through one of the bedrooms. The kitchen needed a renovation and that gave us the opportunity and the clients were open to the idea of relocating the kitchen, which gave us the opportunity to make a much more meaningful connection to the backyard and really reconsider the relationship between the indoor and outdoor spaces. We were quite clear on what the extension needed to do, allow lots of glazing towards the backyard and softening the level difference to the backyard. The first concept we came up with was quite a boxy extension. So that was the first sketch we presented to the client. And we were thinking, how do we make it more relevant to this house? We look at the dominant roof form of the original house. We suggest that what if we continue the original roof form and just let it express the roof form down and it also provided the sheltering that we needed and architecturally the form keying back to the original house. Essentially, it's a Japanese veranda, like an ingawa. The back area was what we really focused on. The rest of the house is retained as it was. Key thing that we altered with the layout in the main kitchen dining space was flipping those spaces. The very small addition that we made to the back of the home created a walkway along the rear and that allowed us to have access from the main kitchen dining space to that bathroom and laundry. And in creating that buffer at the back of the house, we were able to open up to the back garden. The bathroom houses a beautiful Japanese style cedar tub. It's the only bathroom on the ground floor, so it doubles as the powder room for guests. So we wanted it to not feel like you were walking into the family's family bathroom necessarily. So it's somewhat separated into sort of toilet and vanity section and then the bath and the shower. The toilet was located next to the laundry. We decided to glaze the laundry doors, frosted glaze, and a window between the back of the laundry and the toilet, also frosted, to allow light into the toilet. So the materiality of this home was quite important to maintain the charm of the cottage. It's a very pared back palette, rich white walls, rich timbers and exposed beams, joinery in the kitchen, joinery in the bathroom and the bath itself is timber. Obviously the hero in terms of materiality in this home are the client's collections so we wanted something to sit calmly behind that. As the Ngawa theme sort of developed as we were working through the project and touching on that Japanese technique, it also became apparent that we would look at the Japanese architecture in terms of its appearance from the outside to the charred timber and essentially went with a take on that using vertical timber and staining it in a dark black. In terms of sustainability, we approached all the low hanging fruit we added water tanks. It's a very old home, so very gappy. So where we could, we sealed better, insulated, particularly under the floor. All the new windows are double glazed, well sealed. Replaced lighting with energy efficient fittings and water efficient fittings. 
These are all the things that anyone can do to improve the um, environmental functioning of their home. But the big thing here, I guess, was doing as little as we could in terms of adding to the house. Working really rigorously with what we already had, keeping most of the house as it was, and really just focusing on the areas that got the best benefit from any change. From the outset, the client were quite clear on this idea of don't want to overdo it. Throughout the design process, this question about do I really need it, this filter was used on every design decision. As designers, we often can get carried away with things that are beautiful, of high qualities and price tag. This project for us is a testing ground of how to use more affordable materials and put them together and how to make them look good.